Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking a bourbon. Or is it a rye? All right, Ben. We actually don't know which one it is because it's not marked on the bottle, so we should bring it on in. Well, I do. We've got, bam, a sample from Bobby at Bad Axe Bourbon. Please go like, comment, and subscribe. This just says Frey Ranch Single Barrel 126.92 proof. Now, so the question is, is it single barrel rye or bourbon? I looked at the website, they have both. Right, but the reason my phone is hitting here is because just before we started this review, I sent Bobby a text and said, hey, is this a bourbon yeah, or yeah. rye? And he got back to me and mm -hmm. I read the text, but I didn't tell Greg what it right. is. Right, so I don't so know. I know it's... what it is. Okay. Greg does not. But let's get into so, it. Frey Ranch is a Nevada distillery. Yep, they're located near the Reno in uh, northern Nevada. The we call them the Reno, the biggest little city in the world. They sure. used to have a sign that said that. I don't know if they still do. They probably do. Um, Grain to glass distillery. So they're right. growing their own crops. Yeah. They're doing their own distillate. It's just, you know, everything is in house. Right. Which I think is pretty cool. Now, we really have cool. had some experiences with some grain to glass distilleries that we've not yeah, done. Yeah, that, that in, in, in and of itself is not guaranteed that it's going to be great. Right. However. Oh, wow. That's got a different uh, profile. I am curious because I only know of one other. Well, we've had a Washington whiskey, I think. And then an Oregon whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Nevada, maybe the, the first Nevada whiskey I've had. Yeah, I don't think we've ever had one from Nevada. Very rich. Very rich. Let us say the 126. 126 something. Point nine two. So yeah. we're almost 127 proof here. Um, I don't know if the nose is having the ethanol burn that it would suggest at that. Yeah, the, proof the point. high of a proof point. I'm getting definitely some like toffee, like I think some wood sugars and like the barrel. I have no idea the age. I don't know the age. I'm getting some chocolatey and uh, there's a hint of vanilla coming through, but I don't know if it's it's aggressive. Well, let's let's get into the palate here because yeah, I have some opinions on the nose and I want to see if they match up. Cheers. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. Wow. Very different from the nose to the palate, in you my know, opinion. I'm gonna, and I like both. I'm going to give a description, and I don't mean it to be insulting because I think this is great. Okay. But it's almost like chocolate-covered grass. Interesting. Well, it's a, very wet grass. A grassy of. note is not an uncommon. No, yeah, thing I, I don't say a, that as an in insult. A Usually, that comes from youth. But, and that's not what I'm getting. It's just it's got a very like. Now that you say that, the fresh cut grass yeah. clipping smell. Yeah. Is a little bit there, but I was getting a lot of chocolate, mm -hmm. almost that Tootsie Roll note yep. that we got I on think a different that's one. Kind of the style. And um, on the palate, I got a lot of cinnamon up front, mm -hmm. a nice spice to it. Only a hint of vanilla. There's definitely some vanilla. I think I'm getting more rice spice than I'm getting corn. Kind of sweetness, roundness. The, the I would agree with you on that. There is definitely a spice to this, yeah. and I'm liking that a yeah, lot. Me too. It's coming across as almost like a, like I said, a cinnamon, but like an artificial, like candy cinnamon, sure. like the Red okay. Hots or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm really having a different experience on the palate than the nose. I would definitely explore this brand if they were available around yeah, here. Totally. I don't know I what wish. their distribution is. No idea. We don't have it here in Minnesota, which is makes it even cooler to get a sample of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Bobby loves this stuff. I think he even went to the distillery and like did a video, like visiting. I, I think. think that might have been a different. I don't know which oh, one it was. Yeah, maybe that was a different one. I don't know. Man, this is so interestingly different on the nose than it is on the palate. Are you having that as well? I'm not getting like the chocolate kind of note on the nose as much, and that's pretty prominent, like a kind of a milk chocolate kind of like. You're getting on the palate though. Yeah, like this is really really good, mm -hmm. and it's also. The, one of the big concerns with the smaller distiller, I'm assuming they're small, but I have no idea, is they're probably like younger. Like exactly. They, they've got to go from di distillation to barrel as fast as possible and then get it to the customer to like- And then age for, yeah, you know, yeah. A ways. 
Um, but this is not coming across youthful. Like well, I'm not I getting, think, I'm not getting super like long, mature. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a ten year. I don't think. But. No, I would imagine this is fairly youthful. I, I think this could be one of those ones where, our, our oh, scale that we always yeah. talk about is proof versus age. Where if, if you don't have at least one of those, yeah. you know, a low proof, low age bourbon, is going to come apart. across very weak and fall apart. Yep. But if you have one of those, mm -hmm. you know, if you had high age at a low proof or low age at a high proof. So if they're doing their own distillate and stuff, I mean, who knows? This could be a few years old or whatever, yeah. and maybe we're totally wrong. But that's a fairly common thing with you know smaller distilleries, like you said. Maybe that grass note that we're getting is some of the youth, if it is a youthy bourbon, could be coming through. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, but I think the the proof is great for it. So whatever the the balancing act is there, mm -hmm. I think it's working. Hmm. Yeah. This is good. I would explore this brand more for sure. Okay. So the big question that we started the video with is I didn't know if this is a rye or a bourbon. It's not clear. Like it's the most prominent note, I think, besides like the chocolate kind of like, there's not real chocolate in there, but it's just a note that kind of- That almost Tootsie Roll chocolate. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then a lot of wood, like wood sugar, wood tanning, kind of like the barrel char is really prominent. And you would get that on either a rye or a bourbon. So the only other thing I have to go on is there's a lot of spice that mm -hmm. I associate with rye spice. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm gonna guess this is a rye, but it's not 100% easy to call as a rye versus a bourbon. I don't know that I would have been able to guess. It is a bourbon. Oh. And I just said that a minute ago when I was described, but I always, even uh, if we're drinking yeah, a rye, sometimes yeah. I'll say bourbon because I'm so used to it. But yeah, this is really good. The more, the more I'm sipping on this, the more I'm actually even hmm. liking it a little bit more. Like yeah. it's just getting better and better. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the price is on this because, you know, again, sample, mm -hmm. uh, but totally a brand I would recommend at least trying out. Absolutely. It's a bit unique. Yeah, definitely. It's not like a, a down the middle of the road bourbon by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think that's cool. Find something that's a little more on the unique side. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been Frey Ranch Single Barrel 126.92 proof, courtesy of Bad Axe Bobby at Bad Axe Bourbon. Go like, comment, subscribe. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.